Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of an Eldest Majestic 185. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to underneath the van is your fresh water drain off point. So this is the blue tap here. So if you've taken on a source of contaminated water or you want to drain it down for the winter or you're simply not using it for a couple of weeks, all you need to do is open this tap and let the fresh water out. Especially in the winter, as you don't want this water to freeze when we're experiencing colder temperatures. Because if it does freeze, it could cause a lot of damage to the tank and the pipework and it's expensive to repair and it's not covered under warranty so just remember when you're parking it up in storage or you're parking it on the drive and you're not using it just let the water out if we're going to have any cold frost overnight here you've got two fridge vents so these, these just allow the fumes out from the back of the fridge you've got your vent for your right away of just here and then this is where you fill your water so go and buy yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. And then the key that's got the blue on it, which is a water key, this is a lockable cap. So when it spins and you can't grip it, it's locked. Turn the key, so you push it in, you turn it, and you pull the cap out. Then you can put the flat end of the hose straight into the van and wait until it either overflows or you can look on the control panel inside the van to see how much water is on board at any one time. This is your vent for your boiler and your heating system. So just make sure that's always obstruction free but that kind of gives you the location of the boiler on board the van. So that's like here underneath the kitchen cabinets before you get to your beds at the back. You've got a grey tap down here. This is your waste tap. So this is anything that you've put down a plug hole. On the way out of your site, you normally get drive over a grid or you get as close as possible to a grid, which is your dirty water drop-off point. Open the tap and allow that to drain. You should never be driving around with dirty water because it's gonna add weight to the van that's not needed meaning it's going to impact your payload and it's going to impact how much fuel you use. You're going to use more fuel carrying that weight than you are letting it out on the site. But make sure that's drained off in the winter as well because you don't want the dirty water at the trees. Using the flip key, which is the Trimark key, you're going to open all your lockers. This locker here is your battery locker. So you've got one leisure battery, which is a... 100 amp hour leisure battery and you've got your hookup point so i'm going to show you how to hook the vehicle up if you were charging it at home or you had arrived on your site and you were wanting to hook the vehicle up so what you do is you get your like you get your electric lead like so lift the collar slide it onto here put the cable through the groove so that you can seal the locker with the key hook the van first then the site and do it in reverse order when unhooking you've also got underneath a tally point here so if you're on a super site carry a length of coax cable and what you can do is you can use their aerial if you're struggling to get a signal with your aerial on the top of the van and you'll only get that on super site this is your cassette so pushing both catches in Put your cassette at the back there so to get the cassette out what you've got to do is lift the orange handle put the cassette out the van if you want to empty it you either carry it or you can wheel it to the waste disposal point which is normally beside your toilet block for emptying your cassettes and then all you need to do is take the cap off to one side for a moment press the orange button and tip the content of the cassette out once you've tipped it out there's normally a tap there so you put some water in give it a final rinse and tip out again before going in 
with a cap full of either the green or the blue chemical if you're using the liquid. 120 ml, you can either measure it or you can do by eye and just tip it down the spout. Or if you're using the new form of chemical, which is in the tablet formats, pint of water into the cassette, put the back in the van. Your tablet will be kept in your washroom area and all you need to do is open the blade on the toilet, which I'll talk about when we're inside the van, and drop a tablet into the cassette. In the cellophane format, that'll break up with the break down with the water into the chemical but they're a little bit easier to hand store and handle rather than the bottles but you do have a large storage space in here for spare chemical spare toilet roll bits and pieces in the back at the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light and your reversing camera followed by your pro seat yama bike rack so to operate your bike rack, wheels on the rails, these through the spokes and tie them back down by pressing the red button there, you can lock them into place. And then these on the crossbars of the bike to hold the bike up. Bikes need to go one one way, one the opposite way, so that the handlebars don't touch each other in the, and you fit them both on. Then we do advise putting a bike lock around the frame of the bike and the bike rack to avoid the bike being stolen. On the passenger side of the vehicle, the locker at the back here is your LPG locker. So this is your gas locker. So this is where your bottles live. So again, pushing both catches in. This is our test bottle. You can fit two six kilogram propane color bottles in here. The van runs on propane, not butane, so we'll get propane bottles. And this is a test bottle, which is a six kilogram. So you get two of these in here, like I've said. What you do is, when you get it on board, first thing you do is strap the bottle in, for safety reasons, strap it in. This pipe here that goes to the regulator is known as the pigtail. So it's left to tighten, right to loosen. Opposite ways with being gas. Hand tighten and then get an adjustable wrench or a gas spanner and nip it up the final way. Turn the cylinder on from the top. Turn the cylinder off. So it's anti-clockwise to turn on, clockwise to turn off. Make sure it's turned off before you do start travelling. And if this bottle did run out of gas, if you're carrying a spare, it's just a case of unscrewing your pigtail and connecting it to your reserve bottle. But make sure it's turned off before you travel as it's safer for you and for the road. The medic warning will show you on collection. There's a winding handle and that'll be able to come out, but we'll do that on collection because it's a bit windy here today. We don't want to damage your awning. This step has a switch here which goes in and out, but that will retract when the ignition and engine is started on the vehicle. The engine does then need to be turned off to get the step back out. Diesel filler opens with the main ignition key, so your Peugeot boxer key opens your diesel cap. That's because it's a lockable diesel cap, so this key opens that. So it's a case of putting it in, turning it, opening it, putting it in, turning it to the back of the van and pulling the key back out. You've got your tyre pressures on here, so 5 bar on the front which is 72.3 psi and 5.5 and bar on the back which is nearly 80 psi it's actually 79.5 tool kits underneath here so it's got a jack and a brace and a tornai in this kit here which just lifts out with that clip and then underneath this compartment in the floor you do have a engine battery so the engine battery lives underneath the floor not underneath the dash underneath the bonnet should i say if you ever need to change it or put a charger on, you can just lift this cover off and get access to the battery. Bonnet release is here on the side of the passenger dashboard. Underneath the dash, you've got all your fluids to this side. So starting off in the far corner is your screen wash, which is the one you're going to need the most. Then if you release these three back black clips on this cover here, this lifts off and you can fill your power steering fluid and your coolant, followed by your brake fluid. And then down here you do have your oil filler and your dipstick. 
European codes on this sticker. Earthen point for receiving or giving a jump start as the battery's underneath the carb floor. You'd earth off here and then between the air filter and the fuse box, you've got this cover here. Pop your key in there and lift that up. That's your positive for giving or receiving a jump start if you want to jump start the motorhome or jump start any other vehicle from the motorhome. So when you come into your van, this is your main 12 volt control panel. Obviously, if you are hooked up, you will get 230 volts, so you'll be able to work three pin plug items. If you're not hooked up, you will just get 12 volt. So that's where your master switch comes in. That turns the 12 volt on and off. So when you store in the van, knock your master switch off. And when you finish using it, knock your master switch off. Above you've got your lights. This is the main master switch for the lights. And then they all are individually switched around the van. Your awning is the light on the outside of the van and your pump you must turn on to get pressurized water around the system. But make sure you've got enough water on board first, which you can tell through here. So at the moment, it's telling you the volt of your leisure battery. If you press this rock F button, it's telling you that you've just got under half a tank of fresh water on board at the moment. So you can turn your pump on and it's safe to use your pump. Should you have no water on, then don't turn your pump on at all because you're going to burn the element out in the pump. To operate your wheel system, which is your hot water at the top and your heating at the bottom, the plus and the minus is just the temperature gauge, so it's all the way to 30 degrees or all the way to off. The snowflake is approximately 5 degrees and the nighttime mode is approximately 15 degrees on the temperature. But we'll start off with the hot water first. So... When you get to your site, depending on if you're on gas or electric, depends on what source you put the heating and hot water on. So starting off with the hot water, you've got one kilowatt of electric, which is one wiggly line, which is 750 watts. You'd use this on smaller CL sites, or if you're gonna take this abroad on airs, you've got two wiggly lines, which is eight, 1850 watts of mains power so you can use that on a 16 amp site you've got gas on its own if you were wild camping you'd have no other source bar than gas to heat your water on because you would have no electric and then you've got electric plus 750 watts and electric plus 1850 watts so this, if you are in desperate need of hot water, both sources together will drastically reduce the time it takes to heat the hot water. And that's the source you'd use. Underneath you've got your heating. So this is an air blown system to heat the vehicle. So 750 watts, 1850 on a 16 amp feed from the site on electric. 3 kilowatts, so depending on if you're on a super site, you may be able to use 3 kilowatts. If it starts tripping the van, just turn it off and put it back on the 1850, which is 2 wiggly lines, not 3. And then you've got gas on its own. If you were wild camping, that's how you'd heat your van, through gas. And then you've got gas plus 1850 watts, so this is known as mixture 2. And that, in the winter, will drastically reduce the time it takes to heat a cold van to a warm van. So we'll put that on for 10 minutes and then turn the gas on, turn the gas off even and continue to heat the van on two, on 1850 watts of electric. Like I said before, this is your temperature. So the snowflake is five degrees. It keeps it above five degrees. The moon is nighttime mode, which keeps it above 15 degrees. And then right the way at the top is 30 degrees. Remember to turn the system off both and you'll hear the fan circulate in the back until it falls quiet before you turn your master switch off. Otherwise, you can jolt the heater because it's not doing the right shutdown procedure and you might get an exclamation mark, a red one down the side. So whatever's failed, say it was the heating, you'd press the heating button and the plus button together. Hold it for around 30 seconds and that should eliminate that exclamation mark and then you should be able to select the source you want. And it's exactly the same for the hot water. In your kitchen area, you do have three 
three gas burners. Like so. So you've got three gas burners plus one electric hot plate, which is this one here, which illuminates with the red light. And that'll only work when you're hooked up. Once you've had any four on, allow them to cool before you put the glass lid down because if you put the glass lid down when it's too warm it will shatter the glass with the heat of the hobs underneath is where you'll find your grill so you've got your grill there and then underneath your grill you do have your oven <clears throat> You may just want to wrap your oven shelves and grill pan up or take them out when travelling as they can cause a little bit of rattling when on the road. Underneath is where you'll find the location of your boiler and you'll find your gas taps. So your gas taps are isolation valves for each individual appliance that gas is fed to. If you've got any problems with gas, turn your bottle off to be safe. These are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced by a caravan and motorhome technician. They will turn each appliance off to test that the gas is safe on each item. You've also got the, the fuse spur there for the electric hot plate. In here, that yellow toggle is your drain down toggle for your boiler. So your boiler holds 10 litres of water. In the winter, it's very important that you drain the water off because if you don't, the frost will freeze the water in the boiler, which means that you're going to potentially crack the cylinder head inside the boiler that holds the water, cause damage to your van, which isn't covered under warranty. And it can be a very costly mistake. So all you need to do is flick that from point at the back of the van to standing up the 10 litres of water will drain directly out underneath the van you'd leave it stood up on end during the time you've got it parked in the storage yard or parked in the drive not in use just to avoid the water from freezing in the boiler open all the taps throughout the motorhome and open the waste and the fresh from outside this will stop any water from sitting in any pipes potentially freezing busting and causing any leaks when you come to reuse it, obviously shut the boiler tap to like so. Shut the fresh in the waste, shut all the taps inside the van and fill it with a hose pipe from outside. You can now come in and put the control panel on and put the pump on. Open a tap and on the cold side of the tap, you'll get a pressurised flow of water straight away. When you go to the hot side, it'll cough, sputter, make all sorts of noises because the tank underneath the van is priming this tank in here, the boiler, if 10 litres until you get a pressurised flow from the hot side. This is when you know that your system's primed. Start off with one tap, say the kitchen tap. Once you've done the kitchen tap, do the hand basin tap and the shower and then your system's primed for the season. Above in the kitchen, you do have an 800 watt mains microwave. So this will only work when you're hooked up. And you just press eco to wait the microwave and press this button and it'll go up in 30 second increments and you do have your plug to isolate the microwave should you ever need to with a cup rack and a plate rack and then underneath you've got loads of storage drawers along with your drawer there so you just need a cutlery tray to go in here and this would be your cutlery drawer but remember to push the catches in to put them shut before traveling. Underneath you do have your Dometic fridge. So your Dometic fridge is a three-way fridge, which is all done by the left-hand control. So you've got the top one, which is off. Then going down, you've got mains, 240 volts. So if you are on a site or you are pre-chilling, the fridge at home where you hook it up charge your leisure battery turn your fridge on the night before you put your shopping in you would use mains because you hooked up 
Then when you come to travel away from home and it's pre-chilled or travel away from a site to go further afield to another site, you can put it on what's known as the battery setting, which isn't off the leisure battery. The leisure battery cannot power the fridge. This is off the feed from the alternator when the engine is running. So the engine must be switched on for this to work. And it's only 12 volt, so it'll act like a big giant 12 volt cool box until you get back to your site and either go back to mains or you go all the way down to gas if you're wild camping so select gas this is your temperature gauge so you can adjust the temperatures temperature to suit but you push that in along with the sparker to ignite it and then you want this orange band to go in the green let go when it is in the green and then when it's lit it'll look like that so when the orange band is in the green it is lit on gas you can adjust the temperature then to suit. So when pre-chilling, have it on full. When you put your shopping in, drop it down a tad, just so it doesn't freeze the fridge. And then remember, when you're parking up for any length of time, it's always best to leave your fridge door open because it's got a rubber seal on and it'll shut and it'll trap the air. So what you need to do is, beside the courtesy light in the fridge, if you push this catch in, these two pins pop out and what that does is it stops the door from shutting on itself and you can see there there's a gap for air to circulate so you're not going to get smells or mold growing in the fridge and the motorhome's not going to smell when you leave the door shut so always remember clean it out and leave the door open for ventilation so as elders have a birth for belt policy if you take off your cushions in your lounge and then lift it up you've got a fold down traveling seat but what you've got to do first is you've got to get rid of this board to allow the seat to come up. So on, on both sides, you've got one of these. So if you lift it up and push this catch in on both front and back, you're going to fold that down. And then to assemble this seat, you've got two levers. So starting off with this lever, you fold that over, but don't have it too tight. So get yourself a little bit of the belt so that you've got a bit of room to play with and then lift this one and then just keep turning the seat back up like that that's the seat rest in place then do this one bring the seat right up and there you have a full-size traveling seat and you've got exactly the same on the other side and then to put it away, it's very easy. Fold that up. Pull it down. Push that, fold this over. And fold it right down. Lift that up. And slide it down and then you can assemble your lounge again. Underneath the single bed, on the driver's side of the vehicle. If you open this cabinet, you've got your RCD unit, so you've got all your trips on mains power. So if you trip it out on mains, try here before you try your main site. And then underneath you've got your 12 volt fuses, which are all listed what they do. So carry an assortment of 12 volt fuses, which are just the standard blade fuse which you can get packs from your local car factors or online from like of Amazon, eBay and just carry them just in case one does decide to blow a fuse you can pop a new fuse in and it'll probably fix the issue next to it the previous customers also fitted a charging point so you've got USBs here but you need to turn the switch on for the USBs to work and you've got two 2.1 amp charging so they're both they'll both work for phones or devices your television aerial is a directional aerial so if you're struggling to get a signal what you can do is you can loosen the nut off and you can push the pole up tighten the nut to keep it up in place and turn the black collar like this right round and it'll direct the aerial on the roof but a top tip is look where your other motorhomes and caravans are pointing on your site. And then always before you do start driving, this aerial must come back to its normal position because you don't want the wind to get underneath it and rip it out the roof. So pull it down, tighten that up, 
and you've also got a tele booster on here so you can amplify the signal just on this little wheel here so should it be too strong or too weak you can just try that first before you start directing the aerial underneath you've got your tv bracket 12 volt aerial coax point and two two 240 volt sockets but if i was getting a telly i would get a 12 volt one because it'll work off the leisure battery should you well camp whereas if you're hooked up if you're on 240 you've got to be hooked up for that to work and in here is where your freestanding table lives so you can put that in the front or you can take that outside it should be a nice day and you want to dine outside across the back of the van you do have your washroom so you've got your shower cubicle to one side remember when you winterize i would also remove the shower hose from the head lie the hose down and leave the tap open Make sure before you travel, you chuck your shower tray into place with the catch, just so it doesn't cause any damage or rattle around when you're driving. It's locked into place, so it's going to be nice and secure when you travel. And with your shower cubicle and the shower tray, make sure that you don't use any harsh, harsh bleach or chemicals on them to clean them. Use light soap and a microfiber, just so you don't take the glossy white finish off. Otherwise it can go yellow and you'll have to get it painted and it doesn't look very good. So just use light, light chemicals and a soft cloth. So it tells you there, no white spirits or bleach or oil based, highly acidic or alkaline chemicals. And it's the same with the shower, the shower and the sink should I say. So this is showing your hot water system's working and that water is warm there so your hot water system is working correctly that water is up to temperature underneath you do have some toiletry space toilet roll holder and then to flush the toilet it's fed off the fresh water tank so it's clean water that flushes the toilet and what you need to do is ensure the pump's on and press the blue button put a small amount of water like so in the toilet to lubricate the seal between the blade and the top of the cassette and then what you want to do is you want to open the blade which is here this grey lever so slide that away from you you can now use the toilet once you've finished using the toilet give it a good flush if you've bought your blue chemical with your pink the pink's not needed but what you could do with the pink is don't get rid of it get an empty spray bottle put so much pink in and dilute it with water spray the bowl it'll give a nice fragrant smell give a good flush and then close the blade so that means when the cassette indicates that it's full with a few green lights underneath the diagram of the cassette here you can pull it straight out the side of the van and take it to dispose of the waste you've got your large wardrobe here as well with hanging reel and you've got your own unwinding handle which just lives in here as well along with the towel rail. to open this type of roof light what you've got to do is pull down on the bar and then slide it along and you'll be able to open the roof light for ventilation but always make sure the two lugs are into the lugs of the lid so what you need to do is if this happens pull it back and slam it shut so that the lid is locked into position like it is there and it's nice and safe and secure before you travel so what i would do is just on your windows and blinds before you go just give them a little tap make sure they're nice and secure and they're not going to come off with any wind when traveling that's your blackout blind for on an evening and that's your fly screen for if you've got the blind open and the skylight you can obviously put this fly screen across to stop the flies from getting in so this is just showing your rear view camera working this works in any forward gear as well as in reverse so you can always see out the back of the motorhome as you don't have a rear view mirror like in a car this is a camera system and it works in first to sixth gear as well as in reverse.